around here. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, where are we? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Matt Roten. I'm a, a developer tech lead for the Auxiliary Display feature in Longhorn. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's a mixed sort of hardware software uh, feature. Um, the main use at Longhorn RTM will be in the lids of laptops, which I guess you panned around and saw. Yeah. That's a prototype from Asus in Taiwan. And uh, Let's see if I can this, uh, screw it with my camera so I can get a little closer. We're going to make this prototype. It's uh, a development board that's, um, and they custom made the lids. So there's a few of these sort of hand machine prototypes out there. And we're using them for demo purposes, basically. Um, and to sort of proof of concept our, make sure our stuff works. Now, now, why do you need a little display on the lid of a laptop? Well, the, the basic problem is I go to a lot of meetings in different buildings, I'm sure you do too, and when you get there, you don't necessarily remember what room you need to be in, or sort of where you're supposed to be, or what the hell's going on. So, uh, to learn that, you have to, you know, open up your laptop, you know, boot it up, because it probably fell asleep in the car, or the train, or whatever, get a network connection, make sure Outlook's running, uh, navigate to the calendar, and then you know where you need to be. And that can take a while. So, uh, with an, the little auxiliary display computer is uh, basically always there, and always running, and you can navigate to find your meeting really quickly. So, uh, calendar access is, uh... <laughs> See, that's the old version of it. Right. Oh, so, yeah. Hey, <laughs> this I, is I put them on my hands, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. See? <laughs> yeah, so this is our competition, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, calendaring is an important scenario for us. We're, we're also yeah. interested in, uh, uh, remote control of apps on the PC. So, if you're on a plane, uh, listening to music, with your laptop open, you're spending, like on my IBM, you're spending, uh, I think, 12 or so watts to run the machine, four of which is the, the, the LCD panel in the backlight. Well, you know, an advanced user can figure out how to configure the machine so when she shuts her lid, it won't turn off. Yeah. Um, but it might fall asleep anyway. Yep. Uh, and then she can't control her media unless she opens the machine back up again. Um, with an auxiliary display connected to media player, you can, you know, control media player next track, volume up, volume down without having to spend that four watts. So you get more battery life out of your machine that way. Um, and uh, with a big laptop in a plane, it's kind of a drag to have it open anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's more convenient. Well, this is really useful because I listen to a lot of podcasts in the planes. Right. And so I, I can uh, control, you know, going to the next one, next one, next one, because uh, you can get a lot. Because some of them are boring? Podcasts pretty fast. No, really? Some of them are boring? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You've listened to mine. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> So, um, does this add a lot of cost to the machines? Well, the, uh, the, the main, the biggest cost item is the display itself. Uh, our, uh, we're sort of having, our, the, we have a hardware platform that we've designed, like the board and everything, and it includes a 220 by 176, basically a cell phone display. Yeah. Um, that's basically a $20 part, so that's a lot of money just for the display. Yeah. And then there's a, like, a five or ten bucks more for the, uh, the uh, processor, the flash, and the buttons and all that stuff. Right. Um, we, we're also going to support OEMs who want to put a lower cost option into their machines. Like, for example, um, you might want to put a, a one-line LCD on the edge of your machine so you could see it in the bag, for example. And, or a two-line STN LCD. Those are really cheap. Uh, that combined with an 8-bit microcontroller is, you know, five, six bucks uh, total, um, which is a lot less money for the OEM. Yeah. So uh, we're cognizant of the, the cost. OEMs hate things that add cost, oh, yeah. uh, but, they, but they also like the functionality, so there's the trade-off. Yep. Now, um, my friends and I, I was just at the bar camp down in Silicon Valley, and I noticed a lot of, a lot of the 20 to 30-year-old kids have stickers all over their laptop. And I bet that that display will be very interesting to customize. How, how customizable is it? Can I put a logo in there? Or can I put a picture in there? Right. So the uh, the OEM can actually customize, can brand it. Um, we've been talking about what level of user customization there's going to be, like a color scheme and stuff like that. But we we haven't really finalized the details yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Philip Tarone that Make Magazine is going to hack that thing within 15 Probably, minutes. Probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we, uh, we found on the web. Uh, blog post by a guy who basically did the same thing with a pocket PC and a lot of electrical tape. So he, he uh, yeah. taped the pocket PC to his uh, machine and, you know, used it exactly, pretty much the same way. Um, I think he saw one of our presentations and said, you know what, I, I can do that. So the, yeah. the, the desire for this is definitely out there. Yep. Yeah. Um, anything else? Do I, as a developer, can I 
use this oh, display? Oh, there's a key. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, we're on channel 9, right, so... Uh, yeah, <laughs> the geeks want to know, man. What, what, what can we do with this platform. thing? <laughs> yeah, so th there's a nice platform. It's a bunch of C++ COM APIs. Okay. And it's going to be out in the Windows Vista. Beta 1 has the APIs as well as the simulator, so you can actually develop and uh, test out stuff with the SDK. Okay. Uh, it's pretty simple. You can actually just add content down. You can have it displayed. Uh, once the content's on the device, the user can navigate through it, and you can get events propagated back up. To the so system. could I build an RSS news aggregator for this? You sure could. Yeah. Ooh, killer. So I could show you. Actually, we could jump into some of the demos. I would. Uh, I'd love to you see a couple. Show off some of that stuff. Yeah. And what's sitting on your table over there? Oh, so yeah, we can start off with the hardware tour. Um, oh yeah. My office. This is my office. I'm Dan Palvey. I'm a oh, developer yeah. here. Sorry, I didn't ask you the that's famous a, question. That's okay. <laughs> uh, and so I've kind of become the hardware guy just because I have a lock on my door. This is the ASUS prototype. Uh, there's, let me put this down on the desk so you can get a nice clean shot. Yeah. Um, Matt, do you want to toss me the clear lid one? Oh, yeah, sure. So this is here. I mean, just navigate through. Uh, the, yeah, give me a little demo of what you can do with this just from an end user perspective. So from an end user perspective, the scenario right now is uh, my PC is actually on, so we'll open it up and prove that in a second. But uh, we have Windows Media Player here, and this is a prototype application that we wrote. So we can go in here, and we're now looking at the now playing list. Let me see if I can control these reflections a little bit. Can you actually turn off yeah. the light? Is that possible? Or turn off yeah. this one? Yeah, turn off. Okay. Because uh, I'm getting a reflection from that. <laughs> yeah, these things are hard to shoot. To shoot. Uh, Any better? Too much. Much better. better. Much, much better. better. Yeah. So now we're looking at the now playing list here. And um, you can see basically we have information about the track, we have how many tracks are on the now playing list, the elapsed time, the volume, the state is currently in pause. So we can go ahead and unpause that here and let the music play. While we're doing that, let's look at the context menu. So you notice we have a context menu up here that pops up this overlay on top of the main screen. On the context menu you have you know, standard control options, volume up, volume down, let's turn it up a little bit. Uh, we also have something called the Media Library, which you know, corresponds to the Media Library in Windows Media Player. And you can go in here and you can actually browse through everything in your library. So let's take a look at all the albums I have. Uh, you know, basically just a bunch of sample music that I ripped off CDs. And you can go here and select one and say, okay, I don't want to listen to Cake anymore. Let's put on Moby. So we'll go to Moby, press play, and now it starts playing Moby. And just to prove, well, we can open this lid up here, and I'm not supposed to show that. This is media player. It's actually playing here. So if I were to go back on the lid, change the track, it's going to change the track in media player and play something else. Now, how do I know my screen is not on when the when the external screen is on? Uh, you hope yeah, that your OEMs really did a good a job. Battery. They did a good job designing your laptop. So when the, you hit the lid switch it'll actually turn it off. So you can look in here and see it's it's right. not on. It's dark. Yep. I don't know what the threshold is, but we've, we've got the power off. So another interesting scenario. So this is all done with uh, the content format that we've got in the SDK. This is all done just using our public APIs. Any, anyone can write to this. Uh, another demo I've got, which is actually one of the scenarios Matt talked about earlier, is the calendar scenario. So again, this is all done using our APIs. Uh, the device side firmware is, is not quite there yet in beta 1. But okay. what we're doing is we're sending iCalendar data down to the device. Okay. So we're taking iCalendars out of Outlook, and then we're sending them down to the device. And here you can see, right on this line, we're showing you what your next appointment is. So you get the information, the time, the name, and where it is. If you were to go a little bit deeper in here, so you can see there, we also have a last update time. So it was last updated at 11.19, which is right now. Yeah. So as we go in, I'm now looking at all the appointments I have for today. So this morning I had an architecture review, so we can go in here and look at the details, and this was the appointment. And again, we have context menus, so you can navigate through all of the different appointments. We can go back a level, um, and then we can also go to different days, so we can go look at tomorrow. Tomorrow I got a pretty empty calendar, all I have is lunch. How about Thursday? Well, Thursday's payday. Yep. So you can see you get all these appointments, you can go in, you can get details. Um, so it's a pretty cool little platform there. This is really cool. T let me turn the lights back on and let's uh, talk about the hardware platform. So we got, yeah, all sorts of so, cool hardware. So what's running it on this? Because I, I heard there's a spot operating system or something like that. Yes, so the smartwatch folks uh, put together this really cool implementation of the CLR, which is the runtime, yeah. that runs in, uh, I think it's about 350K of memory is what it takes. 
and uh, that's what we're running for our firmware. So if you look over here on my little static pad, we've got our, our current development boards. So this is our development board here. It was uh, it's basically it's based off an off-the-shelf design running an ARM9, and what we've done is we've basically built some breakout boards to it. So we've got USB and JTAG broken off here. We've got serial port and a button panel breakout, and we've just got some homegrown button panels. Right. And again, we have that same cell phone 220 by 176 display that's just hooked right in. So I can use these buttons. We got you know very same stuff. Same, you know, we can go. We got games running here. We can play columns. Uh, so this firmware, this is all running managed code, and yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty impressive what it can do in such so, a... So you said secret work, managed code. So I can yes. write a little .NET app and throw it down to this display? I uh, didn't go that far. Okay. That would be really cool. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. Okay. So what you can write as an ISV is basically you write to the COM APIs on the PC okay. and you're sending content only down to the device. Got it. If you're an OEM, you can actually, uh, there's some flexibility to modify what runs on the firmware, okay. but uh, for, for ISVs, unfortunately, no, we don't support that yet. Yeah. Hopefully okay. soon. <laughs> All right. I can't make any problems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then again, so this is only one example of, of an auxiliary display. So this is, this is the firmware that we're working on and, you know, we'd like to have this because yeah, we can guarantee that it'll work pretty well and it'll look pretty cool. Look a lot like Vista. Yeah. Um, the platform's open, so it can support any other kind of devices. You know, cell phones. Um, as uh, Matt was saying, like a strip display on yeah, the edge. So here we have some yeah design designed prototypes. Um, so this is a display on the um, bezel of a keyboard. So it's like a one-line text yeah. display when the PC is on. So you're playing a full-screen game and somebody sends you an instant message. Now who are you? Uh, do, oh yeah, you that's know? right. I'm Sri Sri Ram Vijay. I'm a program manager on the Oxus Play team. Okay. Um, under the larger mobile platforms group. Happy to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. So yeah, what you see here is a one-line text display on a keyboard. Okay. Um, and this is taking it a little bit further. Um, these devices can be connected in any fashion to the PC. So you could have a remote control connected over Bluetooth, connected over IP, and you see a similar UI on the remote control. So you could have applications sending updates to your remote control instant messages, if you receive email, you can have it all appear there. Yeah. Um, and this is what we had mocked up with the ASUS prototype, and this is just the inlet display. And I might be able to find a few more here. That's cool. Um, yeah, so this is what Dan was talking about, was the two-line text display. Right. So this is giving OEMs a broader range of devices to choose from. So you have um, the uh, option of going with a color display, um, which serves like a wide range of purposes and you can also go with the two-line text display which is going to be a much lower cost option which we hope will become a lot more mainstream so that's it's really cool stuff yeah so I just want to swing back over yep. here so Asus actually was kind enough to build us one of these laptops that had a clear lid so you can actually see the guts that are inside here so this is our dev board right it, it fits right there and then they have the display and they built up a button panel uh, so this is, you know, what's in here. I mean, a lot of people look at this and say, okay, oh, the hump's kind of big, yeah, it looks kind of bulky. Well, yeah, that's because, you know, this is a non-optimized board and they just kind of hack this together. Yeah. So I think when you see production models, it'll be a lot slicker looking. Okay. But, um... So they could miniaturize just, that co yeah. component quite Yeah, I mean, this board, I mean, they could... I'm not... I don't really know how small it could get. Maybe Matt... Well, this... Yeah, so the, it's not necessarily about how small the board could get, but, I mean, look at all the connectors on that thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of that stuff's just not necessary for a production board. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you could design the plastics of the lid differently. And, I mean, there's a bunch of different things you can do. Uh, you know, especially when you consider that, I mean, if you're talking about an OEM using a two-line LCD for an edge display, it's not even going to go in the lid. The, yeah. There's going to be less electronics, and, and they're going to go in the main body of the notebook anyway. Yeah. We won't see these until next year sometime, right, in production? Right. Because uh, it's part of Vista, right? right? Windows Vista. So, it's really cool. Anything else I need to know about this stuff? Where do I go, as a developer, where do I go for so, the information? Yeah, as a developer, the actually, there's a lot to know about this stuff. So, okay. we're creating a full platform with uh, Vista capable APIs. It's not going to be some kind of, you don't have to write code on the device and get it all hooked up. We're doing mostly groundwork there. And what this platform is targeted to do is basically have ISVs who are familiar with Windows. Uh, transition over to Vista and they get a set of APIs they can work with and very easily 
basically connect up to these devices, um, create a simple application or extend any existing application they have, and basically send data down to these devices. And we have a set of tools that went out with Beta 1. The APIs are there with Beta 1. The tools are there with Beta 1. So anyone who has access to the betas can just go download the betas right now. And if you look in the SDK, you'll find all the tools, the APIs, and the documentation you need to get started with this. And I can actually run you through a really quick demo of how this oh, stuff works. Be yeah. So Let this is a yeah, laptop running. Oh, nice yeah. Or maybe over there, I don't know. Yeah. All okay. right. So what you have here is Vista Beta 1. Okay. And what I've done is opened up a console window to the um, platform SDK tools. So we have a simulator. You've seen the hardware on the outside of a laptop. Yep. So what I'm going to do is start up a simulator, which runs the same firmware and is available in a software version for developers. Okay. And you can see it launches up just like the device would, and it's loaded up as a device, so the device driver has popped up. And now I'm going to start using it as an aux display. So as an end user, what the user would have to do is install some application. So I'm going to simulate installing the application by loading up a reg key, okay. a registry file. Now that's into the registry. And I go to the control panel. So the aux display control panel lets users decide which applications they want to see on their aux display. And I select a checkbox there saying I want to see this demo application on there. The moment you do that, you get the application to show up on your device. So the next stage is I'm going to run the application and start sending content directly down. Okay. So this is a demo application I've just coded up really quickly. And I'm going to say, and add this content to the device. And I have all my applications here. And as I scroll to that, I see the hello world appear right on the top level. And you can do a lot of things with this device, actually. You can send different types of content. You have glance content, which is right there on the top level. So it shows you like your next meeting, uh, maybe um, the most recent email you received, the top level information that any user would want to see. And you can dig into these applications, as you saw with Media Player. You can select tracks. You can go through and uh, check your schedule for the day. Yeah. So there's. I mean, I'm like the camera. Okay. So. Um, there's a lot of different types of content you can do there. So yeah. it's a great opportunity for ISVs to basically e extend their existing applications or even create new applications. They might come up with new scenarios, um, send like travel itineraries, send um, directions you look up on a website. Uh, how do I get from here to somewhere else? And maybe they say, send that to my office display. And the user wants it cached away, and they can go and refer back to that without having to boot up the PC. Okay. So there's a lot of interesting scenarios that you can uh, have going there. And with PDC, we're having a session on how um, ISVs can target the platform. And we also have a hands-on lab to walk them through how to create a basic C++ application, okay. as well as a simple managed application to yeah. access the APIs. You know, will you have a website or a blog or some place to find more information? So we have a forum that's being planned. Okay. Um, and this will be off the Mobile PC Developer Center. Okay. And I can give you links to that so you can uh, help point people to that, maybe. Sounds great. Cool. Well, thanks for uh, giving me a little tour and showing me the uh, auxiliary display. This is cool stuff, Our and pleasure. I can't, I can't wait to get a tablet PC with uh, aux display as well because I could use it a lot. Good so. stuff. Thanks. Thanks. Good job.